Hi, my name is Katie. Um, so I noticed there is not a single tutorial on how to use Micro Worlds Junior online, so I thought I would uh, at least get you started. Um, okay, so when you open Micro Worlds Junior, this is what the platform looks like. You automatically get a turtle ready to go, um, and you'll notice that it's very similar to the EX, except everything is in symbols as opposed to um, words, and even the programming can be done with symbols and not words, just symbols and numbers. Okay, so we're going to start in the toolbar. We'll start with this guy right here. This little uh, speaker allows you to turn on audio help. So if I click on this guy and I hover over any tool, click here to start a new project. It will give me audio help as I go. So if for whatever reason, you go through this tutorial and you find, okay, I don't want to wait for Katie to tell me about each tool. You can just click on this guy in Micro Worlds and it will at least tell you what the tool does or what the name of the tool is. For now, I'm going to turn it off. <clears throat> okay, we're going to stop starting the tools at the top. Okay, this tool here will let you create a new project. It will also prompt you to save the project you're currently working on. Okay, this one is open a current or existing product a project. The next one is save your project. This is really important when you're working with kids to remind them to save often. Um, it's just a good habit to get into. Um, this one is to open a turtle button or a text box. This one is if you're programming your turtle or anything on the page and you want to get rid of something, the scissors will let you cut. This one is to copy a page or a shape. Um, and this is a really important one. It's for creating a turtle. It's also called hatching a turtle. Just know that any object that you want to do something in Micro Worlds Junior, um, if you want it to move or if you want it to be layered in some way, it needs to be a turtle. Okay, so you might, you know, if you're doing a drawing in the background and you want it to be static and you don't need it to move, then it would just simply be a drawing using these paint tools. But if you need it to move or to be layered, it needs to be a turtle. Just remember that. This is to print your page. This one puts uh, Junior into presentation mode. So when you want to see what it looks like without all the tools, you just click on presentation mode and it will show you what uh, your work looks like. To get out of presentation mode, you're going to want to push the escape. Easiest. Okay. This one here is who is listening. So if I had more than one turtle on a screen and I want to know which turtle is listening to the commands I'm giving it, you just click on this guy and it will show you. So this is the guy that's listening. Okay. Uh, this one is to add a button. Uh, a button is basically, instead of things happening automatically, you can press the button and something will happen. This one is really good for the literacy connection where students can create a text box. So you simply click on there, create your text box, and the students can type in here. Maybe they want to type instructions. Maybe they want to um, put a piece of writing in there. It's really neat. Um, you can also change the font. You can Obviously, it has to be highlighted in order for that change to happen. Make it bold. Change the color if you like. Okay. When the students are happy with what they've done, they can hit the smiley face, and there you go. The nice thing about the text box is it can be moved around the screen, so it kind of becomes an object. It's very similar to Smart Notebook. Okay, so I've got two turtles. Um, okay, stop everything, which means if I have a bunch of things moving on my screen, I can hit the stop everything, and it stops. Okay, so that's the tools up here. Pretty simple. I'm going to just a good practice and I'm going to save my project. Uh, call it Katie's tutorial. Okay, so the default settings uh, for your page will look like this. Uh, the first tab that will be open for you is the Open Turtle Command Center. So this is where you can program your turtle to do something. Okay, you'll see that I'm dragging the turtle across the screen. Um, I think it's fine to show the kids to do that, but at the same time it's also nice to have them learn how to move the turtle using the commands because that's a good setup for the next uh, program, the EX program. So um, 
you also saw that I was able to turn the turtle if I want him to face a different direction. I can turn his head. Again, I don't really show kids that right away just because I want them to learn uh, the function of doing so when you program your turtle. Okay, to program your turtle, simplest way is to right click and it opens the turtle's backpack. And this is where you'll give the turtle some commands. This command makes your turtle bigger. Okay, and so it, if you see when I say yes and I click on it, my turtle will get bigger. Okay. Uh, this program makes the turtle smaller. This one will have the turtle step forward. And you'll notice that it's, n it's not actually unit any specific unit of measure. It's a non-standard unit of measure, and that's because it's for little, little ones. So forward five, we'll say. And if we want him to go backwards, so this is the forward button, this is the backward button, we just drag it back. This is the, this little blue guy just basically tells you where the center is. So back five, back six. So right now our turtle is going to grow, it's going to shrink, it's going to go forward five, it's going to go back five. Um, but what you need to know is when you move forward five, it's literally going to be really fast. So if you want it to stop, or slow down, you're going to want to put a, a little a pause in there. So I'm going to have it pause. It's really neat. It's all, again, non-standard units of measure, three ticks. So let's just say how it's going to pause for five ticks and then move backwards. So right now I've told my turtle to grow, shrink, move forward, pause, move back. I'm going to stick another pause in here just so you can see what happens. Okay. Uh, this one here is a uh, turn, so you can actually turn, this is by degrees, so we'll have a turtle turn 90 degrees, okay. This one is pen down, this, this basically automates uh, like a writing component, so if you want to say draw a square or a line, so let's put a pen down, and we'll have him, that way when we have him walk forward 10, you'll see the pen come down. Let's put another pause in there. Uh, this is show the turtle. This is hide the turtle. So after, so we're going to grow, we're going to shrink, we're going to walk forward, we're going to walk back, we're going to turn, put our pen down, walk forward, stop for a minute, and then we're going to have the turtle disappear. We'll take another pause, and then we'll have him reappear. Let's take another pause in there. Okay. This one brings your turtle back to the home, which means the very center of your screen. Um, this is kind of layering. You know how I said before about how your turtle can be in front or back, but know that if you want it to be layered, it needs to be a turtle. So if you had um, another turtle in the screen, you would, want, you would say, okay, I want my turtle to be at the front. What else is in here that's important to know? Oh, this is a good one. This uh, cleans the page. So let's put a clean page in in the bottom. And then at the very end, the page will get cleaned. But let's stick another pause in there just so we can see it a little clearer. And this one here um, just turns, changes the, the heading, which way the turtle's heading. And this is really neat because it will show the kids which way the head is going to face. So it's a really nice math lesson to teach angles, but also it's very clear for the kids to see. Okay, so let's change the heading of our turtle. We'll have him head that way. And we'll have him move. I'm going to move this clear page. I'm going to take it out because I don't think I want it to erase just yet. We'll have it pause for 15 ticks. <coughs> okay, so you'll see this button. This happens once. When I click on the turtle, it happens once. If I want it to happen over and over again, like in a loop, then I would hit the loop button. Okay, so let's take a look and see what happens. With, uh, we'll do it on once only. And when I'm happy with it, I'm going to hit yes. You can even um, change the, the paint of your turtle in here as well. I'm not going to for now. Okay, so you ready? Big, small, forward, stop, left. There we go. That's what we just programmed the turtle to do. So you can see that the movements are not really big. Okay, so it's a really good place for the kids to start anyway. Okay, let's put it on loop now and show you what happens. I'll move this turtle out of the way. Okay.
Okay, so if I want the loop to stop, I can use this stop button up here, or I can use this stop button down here. Okay, if I want everything to go back to normal, I'm going to clean the page and I'm going to bring the turtle home. And the reason why I still got a line when I brought the turtle home is because I never told it to put the pen up. So I'm going to clean the page, put the pen up, and then everything's good to go. Alright, so that's basics. Um, and I will stop there. That's just for controlling your turtle. I'll make another video about uh, getting more than one turtle to move at a time. Alright, thanks. Let me know if you have any questions.